Hi there, welcome to my quick job script tutorial. I'm going to add an example of a basic multiplication test to your web page. It's going to look like this. So you're going to be able to complete the multiplication test, so it's put something incorrect, and you're going to be able to answer it and get correct with the score go up. So that's what I'm going to be creating shortly. So let's go to the code. Actually, at the moment, this is what we have. So if you refresh, it just has puzzle to go here with a box around it. All right, and that is the code that we have here. There is no JavaScript in, in this code. I'll just let me fit that into the area. Other than an empty script, there is a small little um, CSS file which just gives you that box and then we'll need to put our puzzle here. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to just paste the form into here, the thing that will show up on the, the web page. So when you run this inside here you'll have that form. So that goes into the main body area, into the main content area of your web page. So that's here, just highlighted. So we have a paragraph which, which shows you the question and we have this thing called span which actually creates a little area and whatever you go in there gets dis whatever you place in there gets displayed on the body area of your web page then I have a multiplication and then I have again whatever you display inside here is displayed on the body area and followed by an equals sign then you have a text box which is an input type and that's identified by user answer and then there is a button which when you click it it will call this JavaScript function so that's what we now have which will not function when run because we don't have the code that goes with it so there it is so we have our hyphens which will contain the random numbers and we have these other literals as well which is the asterisk and the equals and then we have a box to type into which when we check it it will um, obviously do nothing but it is allowing text so what I'm going to do is decide that I don't want that to be a text I want that to be a number field and there are many different input types you need to go and look on W3 schools for form elements input types and you will find there's a whole pile of different types to work with so this is what we now have and we can't type FFF or, or whatever, we can only type a number in there. Can use these up and downs, but I'm not really that bothered about that right now. And then, so it's the same. And now I'm going to put the JavaScript to allow me to generate two random numbers. So let's go to the code, and you place your JavaScript inside a script tag, and that's already set up for you. So what I'm going to do is paste in the script code so I've pasted in two variables, A and B, badly named, you shouldn't use A and B, and a score variable. I've only done this to keep it smaller on the page. I have a function called generate random, don't forget the curly brackets, and then this one here starts the function and ends the function. Some coders might say put this at the end of the function name, some prefer that, others prefer this. You need to look at what your company's standards are. Okay, so then I'm using this here to generate the random number between 1 and 10 and storing it in A. Same thing again, exactly storing it in B. So if you want to do between 1 and 12, change that to 12. Right, so what I'm going to do now is change the HTML inside the span tag for random number 1 and random number 2. So go to random number 1, which is further down, and it's going to be set to the variable contents. The variable contains the random number 1. So if you go down here, you'll see it highlighted. So it's going to change the inner HTML, so that's inside the, the tag. It's going to change that. So go back up. Okay, so it's changing the inner HTML for this, and it's changing the inner HTML for that one. So there it is. You'll see in a moment have to scroll across and there it is so that's creating your your sum now that won't work until we call it for the very first time the function needs to be called at least once and a good time to do that is when you load the web page when you load the web page this is it you can actually say on load at the body 
Okay, so that's the whole web page. Call that function generate random. I need to use normal quotes, so start typing it in again. And because um, the notepad knows about that function, it has brought it up. So it's a language sensitive editor. So here we go. So that should now run that. Let's see what we have. So now we haven't got that. Hold on. Let's just make sure. Oh, I've called it on loan, silly me. There you go. That just is a nice example, um, on purpose, of course, of if you spell things wrong. So 3 times 7, so that won't work. Obviously, the answer is 21, but we can't check it because now we need to do the function that checks. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's to be called. Let's go back to here. Oh, when you click the button, call this function. So we need this function. So do you know what? I'm going to go ahead and type that up all manually rather than copying it from an example that I've, that I've already prepared. And just it's quite straightforward, actually. So you put your curly brackets in there. Always do the start and end so you don't get mixed up. And what I want to do is I want to find the answer that you've entered. Type it in correctly. And um, by using document.getElementID, I'm just going to borrow that bit of code and change it. And then this needs to be user answer. Now, I haven't remembered that, but if you can't remember what it is, just highlight it, go down, and you'll see it is correct. If you didn't know, then just control C on it and go back and control V. Make sure they're exactly the same, case sensitive. And I'm going to get its value because that's a form element and you can get its value. So with the answer, now stored into the answer variable here, I can do some basic syntax, which is just like standard C. If the answer variable contains uh, is equal to A times B and end that if statement. So make sure you have the correct number of start and end brackets. And I'm going to put them into block into a block in case there will be some more code in there. But at the very start, what I'm going to do is just display, I'll show you, I'm going to display in this little area here, correct or incorrect. So I'm going to go and do that. Now that, that little bit of um, space is here, look, you have this message area. I'm going to change the inner HTML, which is this stuff inside the span tag, so that's the inner HTML. I'm going to change that so it says correct or incorrect. So what I'm going to do is again nick this and just change the ID, which is MESG, and I'm going to change that equal to the um, whether it's correct or incorrect. So in that case, it's correct. Semicolon at the end, remember that. And if it's incorrect, just keep it simple for now. Else, again, standard C-like syntax, because JavaScript is C-based. And then you, you just put incorrect, which is really unpleasant, not really nice messages, but they'll do for now. So now we have the check answer function, which is being called when you press the button. So let's run it. OK, so here we go. So 49, check, correct. Some random junk, incorrect. So it's not clear in this box when, you, when you've done the sum. So what I want to now do is clear this when you have it, when it's right. So it's for some reason and it's also not changing the random number so we need to do two things one clear that box let's do that first and then make sure it changes the random number um, to to new numbers so if you get it right change this okay so that's the first thing so go into your check answer if you get it right change that value so I need to change the user answer area so have that Control C, Control V, and set the value equal to blank. So let's check that that's worked. Refresh. So now, so 35, check, it's blanked it out. Okay, but again, now we need to change to make sure they are regenerated. So um, what we can do here is you can, I, you can put this anywhere. You can either only generate a new one when you have got it right, or you can generate a random number when at any on any account so I'm going to generate a random number whether you get it right or wrong and that's how you do it you call a function don't forget the brackets and end the semicolon end with the semicolon okay so 
let's refresh this now and we have 30 check now we have one that's nice and easy check five check and incorrect now what i want to do is underneath this show the score so i'm going to do that now i made a variable earlier which is just starting off at zero so that's the score so in check answer i can increment that there are three ways to do this but just to keep it simple i'll write it in the longest form which is score equals score plus one so that will only go up if you get that right but then what i need to do is change the message area or actually make a message area especially for the score and i'll just put that here and i'll call that score message and that will equal to the variable score whatever's in the variable score so now i've got to make this area because i don't have it score message remember that what i'll do for that is i'll just make myself a new little span area here and place that underneath but what I want to do is I, I want it to be in a paragraph. So I'm going to put that in a paragraph as well. And the other one could also be in a paragraph as well, just for completeness. Because it's kind of just hanging there without any real place to go. So anyway, so this is called score message. And this is going to start off at zero. So your score is zero at the beginning. And then whatever I set it to throughout the puzzle or playing of the little game not really a game but right so if i get it wrong i'm still zero i'm still zero but then if i get it right it should be one and 12 and 20 you can see it's going up now make that more friendly so what i'm going to do is go to the score area make it a little bit more friendly by going into the paragraph area and saying your score is and I might even improve these messages um, that are displayed dynamically so so you, you can see now it's a little bit better that you you actually get a slightly better message so correct and your score is okay so it's doing everything I need it to do but I might want to show you one or yeah one or two little things um, actually just one more thing I want to change this into a different color depending on your uh, the outcome of your score so take a little look at that message it's um, we want to change that message there depending on your so whatever's entered into that area depending on whether you get it right or wrong so here we go if you get it right then I want to change the style of this to see I'm using a document object model and you access things by the dot so instead of saying um, in a HTML I'm doing style.color and this thing will help you to see what options you have available to you all those things can be changed so have a little look at those and I'm just going to set it equal to green which I know won't show up very well on this um, but I can do the same thing for this thing here so that's why I put it in curly brackets because if you have more than one line of code you need to have it in, in curly black brackets because it's a block of code um, that would go wrong if you don't do that so I'm now going to change that text hopefully that will work so it should be green it is quite hard to see but you should be able to differentiate if I put 6 6 you'll see it's incorrect so it is changing it and my score is going up as well and you can change this the the background color of this box and well whatever you want really if you wanted to style it, style it up differently you can go into your extras find out what the ID is for all the class for, for these various things and you could actually make your user answer have its own little style for example so go into your I've got mine in, in a separate file called extras because I, I don't um, alter the main style sheet when you download a template I don't like to mess about with them I think it, you know you don't want to cause any problems with the layout positioning colors and so on so it's nice to just start your own CSS file and obviously link to that make sure it's linked to so up here you will see 
that I have linked to my own CSS and it's all in the correct place. It's underneath this one. So it'll do the main one and then it'll do my styles. It'll apply my styles. So background color, I will put this as purple and color, which is the foreground color, I'll put this as white. Just any as an example of how to style. But you could, you could do all of this dynamically um, if you wish. And that didn't really come up very well, actually. So that's now grey. So it ignored that and took on its own colour scheme here. So 27. So you've got to be careful when you do that. The template will override things. And not just that, jQuery will. So it's the template's jQuery that will dynamically change things. Um, OK, so that's the end of, of that, really. So thank you for watching. And I wish you well in experimenting with JavaScript.